yeah, you can do it tomorrow, but you, you can do anything in the daytime is real hard because you got other stuff going on. Okay, Poochie, let's talk about Poochie. I saw you, you know, you, the video came in very good. You going down into the trailer and everything. Did you get that cleared out to where he could go for a ride down there with you? Uh, Roger, he can ride side saddle on the four-wheeler. He can't get out. All right, side saddle. Roger that. On the four-wheeler. Did he, did he enjoy it? Never made it through yet. He's too hurt. He can't hardly move. Roger that. Are you sharing the gospel with him? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He couldn't get off his tractor the other day. Oh, boy. All right. Well, you know, I know you and him are very good childhood friends. I think he was your best friend when you, when you were kids. Is that right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I was the coolest with neighbors. Yeah, well, you know, that's the way it is in small... You know, my best friend lived up the street from me when I was a child. And we're still friends today. Uh, and, uh, um, but that's just the way it is, you know. The, the, the kid up the street, you know, same age or whatever or close, you become pals because you grow up, you know. You go to school together, you ride the same bus and whatever it is. So I understand that. But, the, but you know, the biggest thing is just, Sometimes it's hard to preach to people, um, but you got, you know, the one thing that the Holy Spirit's been working with me on is boldness. Not to be afraid, just to come out. And, you know, I, every morning when I get up, I'm up at about 5.30, and I have um, a, a half an hour of radiant TV, which is uh, that music and scriptures, and then my church starts at 6.00. And I have three different uh, things that I listen to and study the Bible on in the morning. Uh, great ministry stuff. I really like this uh, uh, Dwayne Sheriff. Oh, I see a good pastor. Uh, and, and I tell you, he's, he's, he's bold. And, and I, I know if you ever watch any of his sermons, you would like him. I also miss. The church up there, the people at your church. If I was up there, you know I would be attending the church. And there's something else, too, I'd probably be a little bit more active. Now that I'm praying in tongues and things like that, I probably would start going to the Wednesday night services and things that they got going on during the week and get a lot more involved with the local church up there. And I like cold tea. All right. Uh, I don't know. I didn't. Uh, as I said, with N Seven I U said that he wasn't going to be able to get on tonight because he was doing the sermons. Um, I didn't even b bother, you know, trying to get in. But last night, Ed and I were on thirteen, and him and I talked uh, between ten o'clock my time and eleven my time. Uh, an hour. It was just pretty much him and I one on one, and you know, he was uh, he wanted to know all about what happened and. I told him basically I went in for a kidney stone, and then they uh, they injured me putting in the catheter, and then I got a very bad blood um, bacteria that kills people. And, and boy, when you read up about that, the Klebsiella, that's what it's called, K-L-E-B-S-I-E-L-L-A. And when you read about that uh, uh, bacteria, it, you know, they can't kill it with antibiotics. It's too potent. And the only thing that gets rid of it is the Holy Spirit. Yeah, unbelievable. I mean, I yesterday it took all the energy I had to uh, to uh, get dressed and went to Publix, um, and, um, got groceries for, for uh, Polly's girlfriend, because she's stranded way out in the middle of nowhere, her, they're Mormons, and her parents just kind of left her and said, I'll see you, and she just had surgery, and, oh, it's a long story. So the Lord spoke to me and said, buy groceries. And, of course, when Polly was here, 
you know, I wanted to be sure, you know, he was doing a good job taking care of me, you know, bringing up my meal, because he knew I couldn't get up and down the stairs, laundry, and all sorts of stuff, making sure I had fresh bed, and, you know. But I spent 300 plus dollars on groceries, so while he was here, they could eat good, and I guess his girlfriend came over and stayed for a while, too. So, anyway, I appreciate Polly being over here and helping. But when he kind of threw on me this morning that he wanted to get paid, I, it kind of threw me for a loop because he led me to believe he was being here for a friend. And, of course, I paid him. But it, but it made me feel bad that because... You know, I didn't realize that he was here helping me because he wanted money. And that made me feel real bad afterwards. But it is what it is. Uh, is he coming up here too, then? No, Paulie's not coming up there. No, but if I, if, if I was to sell the house and the WD was going to come down and help me get everything packed and loaded, you said you wanted stuff, I got stoves, I got refrigerators, there's all sorts of stuff that need to go up. I mean, it's got to go somewhere. You got a lot of that stuff gone from the warehouse, you said, too, though. No, the stuff at the warehouse is all in the house. There's not, there is no warehouse anymore. Right here, so you got a lot of that. You kept all of it, you got rid of all that. No, it's still in the house. It's all in boxes. My stereo and all of that, I found my records that I thought my brother stole, and I had them in, in, uh, locked away out of the warehouse the whole time and didn't know. And the stereo? The records. Remember the records? Oh, the album. Yeah, you thought Jimmy and somebody took them. Well, J Jimmy's records did get sold, but you see, what I don't remember, I, you know, I didn't trust my brother John, and... And at the end there, when, you know, I had all my stuff there, I took my stereo and I put it back in the stores because they weren't taking care of it. I forgot that I took all the records and locked them up in the boxes and took them. I didn't realize I had them because they were underneath everything in the warehouse. But the hurricane did damage at the, at the warehouse. And some of my really good electronic stuff, my my portable radio studio, got all damaged. And, and of course, um, and they lied, saying, "Oh, no, there's no damage." And, and so, I guess it's the will of God that all that stuff is is useless now. And we're talking probably fifty thousand dollars worth of uh, you know a complete studio, basically. No, I didn't have insurance because uh, my, my, I don't have homeowners. And, and um, you know how it is at those storage places. is too bad, even though, you know, the storm did it. But, you know, it, you know life is life. Things happen, all right? So, anyways, I don't think, you know, it, it, it's bad because I had, I actually had plans to, to put that radio studio together. Um, you know, but the Lord works in mysterious ways. I mean, I didn't realize that I was going to be working at iHeartMedia, and I got one, two, three, four, five. I got six different transmitter sites all the way from Port Charlotte, North Port Charlotte, up where um, uh, OS lives, uh, um, all the way down to Astero and Bonita, uh, out to... Um, I'm doing all this work, and now they just sent me in the mail the box of the studios. Hey, you right. uh, a fob. You know what a fob is? Uh, it's like a key, but it's an electronic little thing, and it just looks like a piece of plastic. But when you put it up against a, a, a thing, it reads it, and it'll open gates and open doors for you. It's a key yeah, 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 a key file, FOB, yes. Uh, the key was on there. Uh, doing a sandwich or some acronym, FOB, a key played on board. Uh, no, I don't know what that is, so. I got the 
keep on now. I said, you can access the sites better and you're willing to go to all these sites, so how can you say you leave in that area? Well, that, that's the other thing, too. It's, that's another part of the decision-making process. Anyway, this thing has no keys. The sites have keys and combinations and security because all the transmitter sites is other people and other companies there. All right. It, um, this particular fob is for their own studio building, which is pretty much is not anybody in there anymore because everything is automated and all the programming comes from TAP or somewhere else. There is no local programming. You, you know, the way I heard media is, um, it's kind of weird. But, uh, um, because they sent that to me today. Part showed up because I'm rebuilding another one of their transmitters and we had a special order part that came in. Um, that's going to have to get installed. If, if I get well enough, I probably you know, I'll probably bring in about five thousand dollars in the next in this month if I get well enough to work. Well, you got to have a catch twenty two. You got to stay there and work. You can't really leave. So just have a fly in from Wisconsin, I guess, and stay at the hotel. Well, here was the situation. So they were okay with me taking off for the summer and coming back in the fall. And that was the original plan. But then all of us, you know, stuff didn't happen. The house, you know, remember I had the house up for sale? It didn't, and then I, that all fell through. And then I hired Polly. And Polly, not Polly, excuse me, I hired David Raffy. Raffy Development. And, and, you know, so that's the thing. They needed to start work on the house. I kind of need to be here, yeah, you, you know, in case they're running the problems. The permit and all that, now they're ready to work. So that was another thing that kind of screwed me up. And, and, of course, like you said, the job. Yes, the job came, but I, they, they were going to let me take time off to go up to Wisconsin. I was going to go up for only a month. But originally... I was going to go from Memorial Day and be up there until October. That was the plan before the hurricane. The hurricane taking out my house and everything here changed all my plans. Yeah, I believe it. And I got all brand new stuff for the tower. But I'm not using these Bozo Tower people anymore. If I do, they're going to work under you when you're able to come down. The last time I spoke to you, you said you could get down here in the fall, but I don't know if that's going to happen. But right now, my antennas work, but my rotor doesn't work. I pretty much have to keep the rotor pointed to the north. Uh, I got a brand new rotor because the brand new one I just put up was defective. And also, I got a TV3 that's junk, and, and of course, the new TV300 replaces the TV3. You can still get the TV3, but even Rome says they're junk. The TV300 is a much, much, much better thrust bearing. I got all new stuff. I even got really heavy duty rotor cable that's three times bigger than what I have. Which if I get the house fixed, obviously you know I want to move downstairs and move into the main house. That would be the goal. Live in that and set up from the radio room in the main house. Well, one of the bedrooms there. Uh, okay. Uh, this back area could be turned into a guest place or a rental. And, and, of course, I always got the other bedroom there where you normally stay, you and Deborah, for the guest bedroom. I thought you were selling the place. I, I, I'm not selling the place if you're not coming down to move me. I just told you that. Well, why are you doing it? Because that, that money isn't going to do me any good if I don't have a home to go to and if I don't have help. Originally, that was the plan. 
you and Deborah were going to help me move if I sold the house. And then I was going to take the money, put get it in a bank up there in Wisconsin, and then we were going to, and then we were going to work on and building in Rotan with that money. That was the plan. Well, there's still no problem with that plan. It's just you know, you don't know, you won't pull the trigger on that because I think you want to stay there. Last time you said you just wanted to die in the bed there. I was ready to die. I thought I was dying. That was about a week ago. Well, yeah, was, it wasn't a week ago. I didn't get back from the hospital until Monday. Yeah, I guess it would be a week now. I've been home a week, yeah. And, I, and, and, and that's right. I thought I was ready to die. I tell you what, it, 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 it's very, very bad. I, I'm over the hump. But like I said, when I stand up, I get really dizzy. Uh, getting down and up and down those steps, I can just barely do it without falling. And if I fall, it's all over with. I can't be carrying anything when I go up and down the steps. All right? It takes me two hours to get dressed because I'm so crippled and hurt and weak that it's really hard for me to get my socks and underwear and my boots on. Once I got that on, just the shorts or pants or whatever is easy. But it takes me two hours just to be able to get my boots on. That's what I was asking about Polly. Oh, Polly's home. I sent him home. Yeah, I thought he was coming with to be your first one of them. He needs something. Well, no, he's, he's not. No, he, uh, Polly's going to be working for David if we fix the house. You know, the Lord, like I said, if, I, if you were really committed to this thing and was going to help me move, I was going to pull the trigger. But since you're not really committed and you got too much going on, then, then the Lord's telling me that I probably just need to stay right here, let him fix the house, move downstairs into the main house, have a place for the WD to come down in the winter. If you can't get it to the island, at least there'll be a place for you here. And remember, you're still in my will for all this radio gear that I have. <laughs> you're unbelievable. Now, well, you, I have a hundred thousand dollars worth of half radio gear. Oh come on. Yeah, I total it up. Think about it. I got three amplifiers sitting in this room right now. That's ETI. People offer me twenty-five hundred. $3,000 for that. They want that BPR, I won't sell it. I got the tubes. The tubes themselves are $1,500 because you can't get them. And I got brand new ones in sealed cartons. Uh -huh. Sealed cartons, the tubes. The, 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 what is it? Not 4CX. The 4 1000s. Oh, the Oh, yeah, yeah. And, 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 they, and they come in a box. And it was a metal frame on spring. Unbelievable. Okay. I got the uh the the uh seventy six hundred, I got the seventy six ten, I've got the Pro three, I've got a seventy two hundred, I've got the mobile stuff, um, I've got uh, um another amplifier eighty eight seventy seven sitting down at the uh at the sky needle. I've got a 751, I've got the 100D portable radio, um, the cat loops, and, and i got three solid state amplifiers. Uh, on top of all that, i got two uh, legal limit plus high power tuners. i got the uh, Dentron, uh, which is the 2000, which is a really good tuner. And then i got the brand new Ameritron, which is okay, but the Dentron is really better. Um, okay. I mean, yeah, you total up all the stuff that I got, decrease power supply, um, it, it adds up. Yeah, it adds up. You know about that. It's a pretty big number, but who knows? I mean, uh, some of it, like you say, you can't get either. Well, if I die, I'm, you just don't take much. You just drive down, whatever, pack it into a vehicle, take it. Um, I... I, I have a lot, if I die, 
And that crane is still sitting in my trailer, and I never get a chance to use that tent. I said, Bob, can you get that tent? 